Hey, what is going on guys? It's Modded Dwarf here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 video. So today we're going to be talking about the PS3 exploit. We've had a new update from Chameleon who has managed to chain the PS3 exploit with the existing PS4 kernel exploit as well as I believe Idlesauce or whoever it was that updated it for the PS5 as well. Idlesauce's host is the first one to implement it I believe. So what this essentially is if we kind of take a step back here We've got a WebKit exploit and a kernel exploit. That's what creates our jailbreak for the PS4 and PS5. So the kernel exploit is actually what jailbreaks the console, but you can't access the kernel to do a kernel exploit without a user land or user mode exploit, which is the WebKit exploit. So that's why we call it an exploit chain, because we're essentially chaining two exploits together. First, the WebKit exploit and then the kernel exploit. So what PS3 is, is that it's an updated WebKit exploit that is faster and more reliable than the previous WebKit exploits that we've been using up until now. And Chameleon's essentially swapped out the old WebKit exploit in the chain with PS3. So now we're using the PS3 WebKit exploit chained with the existing kernel exploits to get a faster, more reliable jailbreak. And I believe in the Idlesauce host, it was updated for the PS5. I'm not 100% sure who did that, if it was Idlesauce or if there was anyone else involved there. But uh, Chameleon did it for the PS4. And I believe the PS3 WebKit exploit was created by a user called ABC on Discord. So anyway, that's essentially where we are at the moment. So comparing this to the previous exploits, if we look at what the kind of difference is, how much better is this implementation? So if we run a timer with the old exploit, when we tried to run the jailbreak, now the previous WebKit exploit was pretty inconsistent. A lot of the time it would be quite fast, like it would in this case only takes 9 seconds until we get the insert to USB message, which means it's done the WebKit exploit and it's moving on to the kernel exploit stage. So you can pause the timer at that point and you can see we're at about 9 seconds in that case. However, other times that I've ran it, it's taken much longer. In this case, it takes 35 seconds in order for it to just complete the WebKit exploit, the first stage of the exploit, to get to the USB message, which is a really long time. And another thing that can also happen is you get these not enough free system memory errors, which is when the WebKit exploit fails and crashes the browser, and you have to reload the page and try and run it again. And if it takes sometimes 20, 30 seconds just for you to only get an out of memory error, and then you have to refresh and try again and it might take another 20 seconds to load the exploit. That can stack up over time and take quite a while to actually get the exploit loaded. So comparing that now to our new implementation with the PS3 WebKit exploit, it is much, much faster. It's consistently within about five seconds every single time that I try to load it. Now you can find it on the website kmeps4.site forward slash 900 forward slash PS3. This is just a test implementation of it right now, although I suspect it will probably be updated eventually once it's been fully tested so that all of the normal hosts will use this exploit. So you won't have to do anything. You can just sit back, wait for the exploit host to be updated, and then you'll be able to enjoy a faster, more reliable exploit. Now, even when it crashes, it's still faster too, because when it actually crashed for me, it's only crashing within like three or four seconds of actually trying to load it. So you can just immediately refresh and jump back in and try and load it again much faster instead of waiting 20 or 30 seconds only for it to fail. So that is also a good thing. Now on the PS5, the difference is not that noticeable. I mean, it is still better than the original WebKit exploit used in the PS5 jailbreak, but it's not as big of a difference as it is on the PS4. So if we look at the old version on the PS5, you can see that the kind of longest I could get it going was about eight or nine seconds here. I think eight seconds roughly, or ju yeah, just about eight seconds to get past the WebKit exploit part. Once it gets to triggering UAF, that means it's doing the kernel exploit at that point. So it's just the, the point up until triggering UAF, and it only takes about eight seconds there to actually load that with the old exploit. But it does also have the problem sometimes where it gets stuck on you know trying to load the webkit exploits where it takes about 20 plus seconds and then it can give you the not enough free system memory error and you have to reload uh, the page and try again so that can still happen on the ps5 as well which makes it take longer so with the updated version with the ps3 exploit you can see the difference here again it's actually a little bit faster in my test than it was on the ps4 at least compared to chameleon's uh, host on the ps4 with idle sauces one on the ps5 it's usually within about uh, three or four seconds so just a tiny bit faster 
but overall more reliable as well and again it has the same benefit of when it's going to crash it's only going to take two or three seconds for it to crash the browser and you can just reload and try again instead of waiting 20 or 30 seconds so there is definitely an improvement on the ps5 too it's just not as big of a difference as it is on the ps4 and uh, also you're not running into as many uh, not enough free system memory errors because this webkit exploit's a little bit more stable it doesn't run into those errors as often as the previous webkit exploits did so that is pretty much it that's the main difference so far that we've got with this new ps3 implementation we just got to wait for all of the exploit hosts to be fully updated to integrate this new webkit exploit into their hosts so that you can all benefit from it and of course i'm sure raspberry pi hosts and esp32 s2 and s3 hosts will also be updated eventually there'll be new binaries available that you can flash onto those and uh, get it up and running on those devices too where it can also do the auto usb injection which will overall make the exploit much nicer to use so yeah now the ps3 exploit does have a few other benefits for future jailbreaks if a new kernel exploit comes out for the ps4 in future then it could be chained with this PS3 WebKit exploit because it works up to 9.60 before it was patched. So any new kernel exploits that come out up to 9.60 could be chained with this to get a higher jailbreak on a higher firmware. So that is another big benefit. It also benefits people on older firmwares with broken Blu-ray drives because it can be chained with the existing kernel exploits on older firmwares in order to be able to update a console that has a broken Blu-ray drive by running the jailbreak and using lightning mods no bd updater so it does have a few other benefits there as well so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and once again i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video